Hello friends, today I am back with a product empties video. Basically, this is everything I have used up in the year of 2023, plus probably a few from 2022. I have a huge spread here, a huge spread here. We have body, makeup, skincare, hair categories. Also, you probably can't tell too much from this angle, but I am currently 33 weeks pregnant, so it is inevitable that in parts of this video, I am going to sound out of breath and winded. Let's start in the makeup category because it is the smallest category that I have today. Starting with eyebrow pencils, I have loved the NYX, uh, what are they called? The NYX micro brow pencils so much. They are a great, fantastic dupe for the Anastasia Brow Wiz pencils. And I clearly drew my brows in a lot this year. <laughs> Next up, we have eyeliners. All three are from L'Oreal. Two of them are the Voluminous Liner Noir, uh, the cat eye effect, I think. And then this third one is called Voluminous Superstar. I really like the Voluminous Linen Noir one so much more, but this one wasn't so bad. I won't be repurchasing the Superstar one. But I've also been loving the Kat Von D Tattoo Liner a lot lately. So I think I'm gonna stick with that one moving forward. But the L'Oreal Liner Noir is a great drugstore alternative. And then I definitely used up so much more mascara than three tubes this year, but I have one from Too Faced. And then one of my favorites that's from the drugstore is the Lash Paradise from L'Oreal. And I know this one is super hyped up. Uh, the Too Faced one is not bad either, but why pay for Too Faced prices when you can pay for L'Oreal Lash Paradise instead? And then the Urban Decay Classic Eyeshadow Primer. This is such a classic if you've been around uh, and watching makeup videos on YouTube since, I don't know, 2008. <laughs> I also have a couple samples here, the Anastasia Brow uh, Gel, the clear one, a Gucci mascara, and a Volume de Chanel mascara which I have loved the Chanel Volume de Chanel mascara for the longest time ever since high school. But then again, also Lash Paradise is just as good as well. Uh, but if you want some more of a luxurious product, something to make you feel a little bit more oomph in the morning, you can get the Chanel one, beautiful, love it so much. And I actually do have one currently in my drawer, but the Lash Paradise from L'Oreal is a very great alternative to Pretty much anything in my opinion. <laughs> and last but not least is in 2023, I discovered a, pow it's not a powder foundation, it's like a compact puff foundation. It's still a liquid puff foundation. In particular, the one I have been really liking is from Dior. It's the Dream Skin Fresh and Perfect Cushion uh, Foundation. And it basically, this is the refillable portion that I have used up. It comes with a beautiful little cushion and then you have a puff inside. It's a liquid foundation, it's not powder. Uh, and then you just use the puff and then it just does a very light application. It really does not cover much. It's super light coverage, but it does help to even out your skin tone a little bit more. It's a great foundation if you're looking for something super, super light, maybe even lighter than a BB cream and just a little bit more luxurious. So this year I've been really focusing on my hair health. So I have a lot of hair products to show you today, starting with one of my favorites. I don't even have enough hands to show you how many bottles of Moroccan oil dry shampoo I have used up. I have nine bottles here with me and I love this stuff so much. My favorite way to use dry shampoo is to spray it into my hair the night before so that throughout the night as I'm sleeping, it kind of absorbs as many oils as possible. And that way in the morning, especially since I have darker roots, in the morning that dry shampoo is a little bit easier to brush out throughout my hair and it already has absorbed as much oil as possible. And that way I can go four or five days between washes if I really wanted to. And at one point I must have run out of my Moroccan oil dry shampoo and was in a pinch, so I bought this Batiste one. And although it's a great drugstore alternative, I really think that spending a little bit extra on the Moroccan oil is so worth it because this lasts so much better and it absorbs so much better in terms of uh, all, the, all the oils in your hair. Whereas this feels very artificial, it makes my scalp feel more dry and all in all, I don't love this, the, the Batiste dry shampoo, but it is a great drugstore alternative. For a really long time, I've also really enjoyed the Bumble and Bumble blonde leave-in conditioners. Uh, you can probably even find it in one of my previous uh, product empties videos, but halfway or somewhat throughout the year, I found out about the Blowout Professor on YouTube, and he recommended using the Purology 21 Benefits leave-in conditioner instead. 
So I've been trying this ever since and I've been really enjoying it as well. I love this, but I love this more. I also know that a heat protectant is really important for your hair, especially if you're someone who uses hot tools on your ends a lot. Uh, and I used to be that person. Uh, so I used the Bumble and Bumble heat protectant spray. I didn't love it, which is why I only actually have one bottle of it for the entire year. And plus I still barely use it in general. Uh, and not as much as I should be at least, but I got the job done, but I didn't love it. I still felt like it made my ends a little bit gritty. And overall, I just always prefer when my hair does not have heat protectant in it. Now to keep my ends as moisturized as possible, I have loved using the Kerastase Elixir oils for the ends of my hair. I have three bottles of them here, and then I have a couple others that I wanna show you as well. I did really enjoy these and I will continue to purchase them. I also love the Kerastase Purple Bottle uh, line. It is made specifically for blonde hair and I loved using the oil and also they have a serum as well. I do prefer the oils more, but the serum is also really nice if you prefer more of like a lotion-y consistency for your hair versus an oil. However, between the two of these, I think I prefer the yellow version of the oils more. I really didn't feel like the blonde really did anything to brighten my blonde or to help it. Uh, I just have one bottle of it from the entire year. Going back to leave-in conditioners, I also tried the It's a 10 Miracle Leave-In for blondes and then also the Inner Sense Leave-In Conditioner, which is like a healthier alternative with better ingredients. Uh, I didn't enjoy this one too much to be honest and I didn't really enjoy this one either. I liked my Purology uh, 21 Benefits leave-in conditioner so much more and even the Bumble and Bumble leave-in conditioner as well. This just still left my hair feeling a little bit more dry and this, I just, I can't put my mouth, my, I put any words to describe it but I just didn't love it. Argan Oil is another product that I really loved incorporating into my hair routine. I love using it on the ends of my hair and leaving it in for a couple hours before my shower in the evening or just actually also using all over my body as a body oil is just such a versatile product whether you use it in your hair, on your body. And this one is just pure organic argan oil. I think it's like $12 on Amazon. It's super inexpensive, but it has a lot of great benefits for everything. Now let's get into some shampoos and conditioners. I love following Amber Filler Up on Instagram, but her hair care line, I tried her shampoo, the deep conditioning treatment and the shampoo. And I was just not impressed. I don't love it. I love some others more that I will show you. This one was just, it's so aesthetic, but it just didn't, it didn't do it for me. In 2023, I also tried to incorporate a lot more products into my hair care routine They had that had ingredients that are much better for you. So one of the lines I tried was the 100% Pure, and this is the Kelp and Mint Volumizing Shampoo. Didn't do it for me. There's nothing like the good old fashioned chemical shampoo. So I used it up and I never repurchased it. Now, I'm not sure how to pronounce this. It's the Schwarzkopf Blonde Cool Blonde Shampoo. Personally, I will not be repurchasing this one. I just didn't feel like it really brightened up my blonde as much as my Kerastase Blonde Brightening Shampoo. That one I personally love and that one is my favorite. And this one I just won't be repurchasing. Another shampoo love that I do love a lot is the Kerastase Densifique line. I have been using this Densifique uh, shampoo and conditioner along with uh, the one that's pink. I forget the exact name of the line, but I just switch out between the Densifique and the pink brand. Now, because I don't wash my hair that often, I have not used that many shampoos this year. Usually I only wash my hair like twice a week and my hair is pretty thin but I really did enjoy this Kerastase Densifique line and will be repurchasing. Now, my sister, she is a big lover of the Purology shampoos, so I decided to give them a try, just the Strength Cure Shampoo and Conditioner. I did love this line, but I don't love it more than my Kerastase. I love my Kerastase Densifique and the pink one so much more. And after finding the Blowout Professor, I'm pretty sure that's what his name is, on YouTube, he recommended a Redken line of shampoos. So I've been also using that for a while now and really enjoying that too. Now, in terms of deep hair conditioners, I used up the Amica The Cure. Heard a lot of great things about this as well. Personally, it's not my favorite, so I will not be repurchasing it. But I also used up the Pro Addiction 
uh, multi-protein hydrating mask as well that my hairstylist recommended to me. It's a smaller bottle compared to the Amiga, but I really enjoyed this hydrating mask and it takes you a really long time to get through it just because of how thick it is. It smells delicious as well and I will certainly be repurchasing this from my hairstylist. Last but not least, let's talk about hairsprays. For the longest time, I have loved using the Tresemme line of hairsprays. I really feel like it's a really great inexpensive drugstore alternative. However, when I went to my hairstylist back in June of 2023, she showed me how much buildup my hair had that was, that was because of hairspray and she said it's so important to use a higher uh, quality hairspray instead to avoid all that buildup in your hair. And when I told her that I used Tresemme hairspray, although I really love this and I feel like the hold is phenomenal, she said that I really need to switch over to a higher quality hairspray. So that's when I made the switch to Kenra hairspray and I really like this as well. It is of course on the pricier end, which makes me a little bit sad, but it is a very great product and I haven't had that buildup issue ever since. They have a great working spray, which has like a lighter hold, but still has a really good hold. And then if you want something firm and stiff for any particular hairstyle, they have a heat block spray that I thought was a heat protectant, but it is actually a very high hold hairspray. Anyway, that's it for the hair category. Let's get into some body products. I thought I would start off with my favorite gradual self-tanner, which is the Lux and Filter number 32 self-tanner. I love this stuff. It is so easy to use, almost foolproof. I do love to use it with a mitt versus with my bare hands, although they say that you could use it with your bare hands. I just find with a mitt, it's an even more foolproof application. So highly recommend, love it, repurchased it multiple times. Next up is a body wash from Aloe. I'm pretty sure I received this in a FabFitFun box, uh, which it was fun to use. It felt more like of a luxury item, but I'm not gonna be repurchasing it. I'm just gonna stick with my Dr. Teal's body wash from Walmart and I'll be fine. Now this year I went on a bit of a deodorant journey. Uh, if you watch my previous product empties videos, you might know already that I love, 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 love Kapari deodorant. I think this is a great deodorant and it has cleaner ingredients, aluminum free, etc. I, I don't think it's 100% clean, but it's very clean compared to other brands you see like in drugstores and whatnot. However, this year I decided to try a few others and venture out and see what else is out there. Someone I'm following on Instagram is Illy from Healthily. She posts a lot of non-toxic cleaner alternatives to so many different categories in your life. And I thought I would try a deodorant from her shop. She sells a lot of clean items on her livehealthily.com shop, I believe it is. So I decided to try this one. I'm not sure how it's pronounced, whether it's N-A-A -A or N-A-N. -N. Now, although this deodorant smells lovely, I forget what scent I got, uh, lemon myrtle and geranium. I just felt like the application was so stiff. I love it so much more when a deodorant just glides in your pits versus just tugging the skin. And I just felt like this tugged the skin, I didn't really enjoy it. So then I purchased another deodorant that is very popular nowadays all over social media and it is the Salt and Stone brand. I have it in the Santal smell and it is so delicious. So I used up the mini version, really enjoyed it, and decided to get the actual full-size version of it and also upgraded my husband to the black version from Salt and Stone. Uh, I do really enjoy it, however, it does have fragrance in it, uh, so I, it's not entirely too clean. I think the Capari one is possibly cleaner, don't quote me on that. But it is a very lovely deodorant, I'm currently using the full size version of it. But I will probably not be repurchasing it because I think I want something that's a little bit more cleaner if I'm going to put something near my lymph nodes. And I'm th I really want to try the Agent Nature deodorant next. This Ahava shower and bath oil I have had for the longest time in my shower. I am not someone who takes baths, but I finally used it up and I don't, I don't feel the need to repurchase it. From what I understand, the purpose of this is that you lather yourself with it, you know, whether after like at the end of your shower um, or you can sprinkle it into your bath and it's supposed to help to moisturize your skin. I don't feel like it really made a difference but it definitely felt lovely while using it in the shower, but I don't feel the need to repurchase it. Now I have several of these Moon Valley Organics beeswax lip balms that are a much cleaner alternative to chapsticks that I also actually purchased from the Live Healthily shop. I really enjoy these chapsticks and I bought multiple packages of them and have used up a lot of them. 
I'm not sure why I only have four here. However, halfway through the year in July, 2023, I got pregnant and something, I just can't be bothered with the way it leaves my lips. So I have stopped using it since. Maybe I can go back to using them after I give birth. And speaking of pregnancy, I have loved this Earth Mama Belly Oil so much. I only ran through one of these, so I would say it lasts pretty long. I expect it to be going through these like once a month. It lathers on so nicely. I also really love the Earth Mama Belly Butter from them as well. I just got both of them because I figured I don't know what I'm gonna like. And I just prefer the oil consistency over the lotion consistency. But if you prefer a lotion consistency more, then you might be better off purchasing the belly butter, which I haven't used up yet, but I do really, really enjoy. And last but not least in the body category, this would not be a product empties video without a bunch of, oh, shoot, that one fell. Without a bunch of Ritual Vitamin bottles. I have talked about these before and I know all the influencers talk about them. I personally am not sponsored by them. I do have a referral code because everybody gets one but I love these vitamins so much and I felt like I, when I started using them back in 2020, I believe, I really felt like I noticed a difference in how strong specifically I noticed it in my nails. Uh, so I'm like, if it's working in my nails, it's probably working everywhere else as well. Full transparency though, I have been taking a different prenatal during my pregnancy. Uh, I did take the prenatal vitamins from Ritual before I got pregnant, but then once I found out I was pregnant, I decided to try the parallel uh, prenatal multivitamins instead and I have been enjoying them but I think after I'm done with the pregnancy I'm gonna go back to my ritual vitamins instead the only thing about the parallel multivitamins is that you get several of them in a little daily packet and this one is just so much easier because you just get what you just have to take one or two of these and that's it per day so I think after I give birth I'm definitely gonna go back to my ritual vitamins instead. My next and favorite personal category is skincare. Starting off with one of my favorite, 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 favorite moisturizers. Actually, I have two. <laughs> this is my daytime favorite moisturizer. It is the Zeo Skin Health Daily Power Defense. Now this is a pricey item, but it is so worth it because it does not go by fast. As you can see, I only used up two of these. I would have had a third, but I got pregnant in July and these are not pregnancy safe. So I gave it to my sister and she really loved it too. But the Zio Daily Power Defense Daytime Moisturizer, I cannot wait to go back to this once I give birth or stop breastfeeding, whatever the case is. But sadly, it's not pregnancy safe. Now I did try a different moisturizer that is supposed to be similar to the Daily Power Defense. Uh, I wasn't necessarily trying to replace it, but I heard good things about this one, so I thought I would try it. Personally, I like the Zio Daily Power Defense more. This is the Revision DEJ Face Cream, and this was another uh, recommended product for a daytime moisturizer for me, but I really like my Daily Power Defense so much more. So I already have one bottle of this. I will not be repurchasing the Revision Skincare one. I also tried the Revision Skincare Hydrating Cream, which is supposed to be kind of like a hyaluronic acid moisturizer or serum. I personally did not enjoy this as much as well. I personally love my SkinCeuticals HA Intensifier Serums so much more. It's not necessarily a needed item in your skincare routine. It's just like a nice to have item in your skincare routine, I think. Uh, but the Revision Skincare Hydrating Serum did not do it for me. I will not be repurchasing this. But this SkinCeuticals Hyaluronic Acid uh, Serum I did really enjoy and did repurchase. And I will be repurchasing in the future as well uh, when I feel like adding a hyaluronic acid into my skincare routine. Another SkinCeuticals product that I love so much is the CE Ferulic. I'm shocked that I only have one bottle in front of me. I don't know if I just used one bottle all of 2023 or if I threw all the others out, but I love this so much. I have repurchased it multiple times and you'll probably find it in my previous product empties videos as well. I did try a new vitamin C serum by Kiehl's uh, later in the year and I still am not through the bottle. I don't love it as much. I think I really love this Consuticals one so much more. I'm probably gonna finish the Kiehl's one and continue trying it, but as of right now, this one is just top notch. And while we're talking about SkinCeuticals, I also really like their retinol creams. Uh, this one is in the 0.5. I believe this is the smallest dose that they sell and I really enjoy this cream. I love it so much. Sadly, it is not pregnancy safe and I cannot wait to go back to it after I'm done with 
uh, birth and breastfeeding, but I love retinol so much and I love the one from SkinCeuticals. It's easily accessible and you don't have to go to a dermatologist for a prescription for it. And I feel like it does a very, very nice job. I definitely notice a difference in my skin and how clear it is. I almost even feel like it helps with my skin tone as well, which the Zeo Daily Power Defense Moisturizer has been so helpful in helping to keep my redness down a little bit more and overall give me a more even skin tone and I miss that so much. <laughs> I do have another hyaluronic acid serum here actually. This one was a PR package from Good Molecules that I received. I didn't hate it, but I didn't love it enough to repurchase. I know it's a very affordable product at Ulta. I definitely felt more of a difference when using my SkinCeuticals uh, Hyaluronic Acid Serum instead. Now, normally this is not something I would ever purchase. I don't know if I did purchase this or if I got them from somewhere or someone gave them to me, but I have this collection of three herbivore oils. Clearly, I did not love these as much though because these are half full and this, one, this one's empty, but I'm not going to repurchase it. This is the Emerald CBD and Adaptogens Deep Moisture Glow Oil. Looks like I used it. I don't remember the specifics of it because I do not want to repurchase this. And if I do not want to repurchase it, clearly it's not that. It wasn't mind blowing to me. By the way, I'm just tossing things in a bag here. <laughs> now the next one is the Herbivore Phoenix Facial Oil and the Herbivore Lapis Facial Oil. Although they look really aesthetic and beautiful sitting out on your display cabinet, your closet, beauty closet, whatever, however you display your beauty items, I just didn't love them. And then halfway through, I'm like, why am I forcing myself to use this up when I don't feel like they really do anything for me? So then I stopped and that's why they're half full. <laughs> the Dr. Dennis Alpha Beta Universal Peel Pads. I really like this or Universal Daily Peel. I really like this. This little box comes with five treatments and it's really great if you wanna give your skin a little bit of a reset. Uh, it's a little bit of a chemical peel. It's not super harsh. Well, I guess depending on your skin type, it might be harsh for some people. For me personally, my skin is pretty normal average. It's not super sensitive, but it also doesn't tolerate everything. Uh, and I really enjoy these Dr. Dennis Gross peel pads. I have several eye creams to share with you. I am not loyal to any particular eye cream just because I don't know how efficient they really are and how much do they really work. So I just kind of try to moisturize under my eyes, but I'm not loyal to any one brand. Uh, the ones I've used up in 2023 is the Estee Lauder uh, Advanced Night Repair Eye Serum or Eye Cream. And then there's a Pericone Cold Plasma Plus Eye Cream. But I did stay consistent with the Biosans Squalane and Marine Algae Eye Cream. I used up three packs in 2023 and I'm pretty sure the only reason I stayed consistent with them is because they were 100 point rewards from uh, Sephora. So I didn't really have to buy them and it was just like a really small reward. I mentioned I received the Good Molecules PR package and I had the hyaluronic acid in it. In that PR package was also this instant cleansing balm, which is a great alternative to the Elemis cleansing balm that I used to love a lot. And I still really love, I just don't repurchase it because I feel like my cleanser takes all my makeup off anyway and I don't wear heavy makeup anymore. So I don't feel the need to do, use the Elemis Cleansing Balm, which I have featured in previous product empties uh, videos. But if you are someone who does heavy makeup and you just want that extra help with taking it all off at the end of the day, the Instant Cleansing Balm from Good Molecules, which is sold at Ulta, is really good. I really enjoyed it uh, for days when I wore heavy makeup, like specifically heavy eye makeup. And it can be found at Ulta. I believe it's also a pretty affordable company as well. So be sure to check it out. If I ever need a cleansing balm again, I probably will be repurchasing this one just because of how affordable it is compared to the Elemis cleansing balm. Now, speaking of Elemis, I do also love their dynamic resurfacing facial pads as well. Uh, it's just a, like a BHA. I don't even have any pads left. I don't know why I opened it up. It is basically an AHA BHA cleansing pad that helps to kind of do what the Dr. Dennis Gross um, daily peel pads do, just kind of reset your skin a little bit more, do like a small uh, light chemical exfoliation that in this you could use, I believe it's every day. I personally used it every day uh, and I was totally fine with it. You can use it every other day if your skin is a little bit more sensitive, but I really did enjoy these and I will be repurchasing them after my pregnancy. <laughs> Another product that I used up that is a really nice product, but I don't feel it's necessary, necessarily needed in a skincare routine 
It is the Glycolic Essence by Caudalie. It was nice to use, but it just, it just didn't do enough for my skin for me to justify using it and repurchasing it. Again, I just, it was nice. I don't feel like it did much of a difference basically, so I will not be repurchasing this. Next up are a couple of samples. I have the Obagi Gentle Cleanser. This came somewhere with something because I definitely did not purchase this. Uh, and I just used it up. I like keeping like small travel items like this because it's great for travel uh, and I don't usually use them at home. And then I have the Laneige Water Bank Moisture Cream, which I didn't hate, but I didn't love, so I won't be repurchasing it either. And then we have the Peter Thomas Roth 24 Karat Gold Luxury Eye Patches. These are definitely luxury. I believe this whole thing costs like $75. I will not be repurchasing it because it costs $75 and I just feel like it really did not do that much of a difference to my under eye area like for $75 you would expect something to do magic, literal magic under your eyes uh, but I would always keep these in my fridge and if you want a luxurious item like a treat yourself item this is great but I think I'm gonna go with the more affordable eye patches next time. <laughs> I also used up six of my oil-free acne wash from Neutrogena, the pink grapefruit one. I love this stuff. I think it does just as well of a job as a more expensive cleanser. I personally don't understand why people buy expensive cleansers. Uh, I've tried them and I don't, and I can't justify them. So I just love using the one from Neutrogena. I think it's great. It gets the job done, takes all my makeup off. I do double cleanse with it though. Sometimes it doesn't take all my makeup off in the first round but it definitely does by the second round. And clearly, I love this stuff. Okay, now let's move on to probably my favorite, favorite, favorite product of the year. Uh, my nighttime moisturizer. I told you guys about my daytime moisturizer. Let's talk about my nighttime moisturizer. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten tubes of my favorite evening moisturizer. It's a great daytime moisturizer as well, actually. Uh, but it's just very, very thick uh, and it's just lovely. I love this so much. Technically, it is a face mask, but I love to use it as a moisturizer. It is the Summer Fridays Jet Lag Mask. I have been talking about this for so long and you can definitely find it in my previous product empties videos. I've always used it as my nighttime moisturizer. However, after I got pregnant, I cannot use my Zio Daily Power Defense as my daytime moisturizer. So I've just switched over to using this as my daytime moisturizer in addition to being my nighttime moisturizer. And I love it. I think it's great. I love this so much. I love this so much. I don't know what else to tell you besides I love this so much. <laughs> and then also by Summer Fridays is my last product in the skincare category. It is a Summer Fridays Overtime Mask. It's a really great exfoliating face mask. I love applying this at least once a week or every two weeks. I don't use it too often because I do the chemical exfoliants as well. Well, not anymore, but hopefully I'll get back to them soon. <laughs> uh, but this is a great exfoliating mask. It smells like pumpkin and gingerbread and it's pleasant and I just love using this on my skin so much. If you have made it until the end of the video, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. I know it was a long one with so much stuff to get through from the year, but clearly this is just like all the products I've used up, all the products I've loved in the past year and we'll be repurchasing also. In the future, I think I'm gonna keep my product empties to my Instagram page instead, so be sure to follow me on there, and I will see you guys in my next video.